Hey everyone, Pastor Josh here. Welcome to our Stronger Marriage Podcast, where my wife and I answer your questions in relationship to marriage. Today we're talking about the law of priority and answering the questions we've been given in relationship to how to apply the law of priority to all of the practical areas of life. In today's episode, we're going to deal with the issues of sports, boy moms, and how to diagnose whether or not the law of priority is being violated in your marriage. It's going to be spicy. We had a ton of fun. Welcome to the Stronger Marriage Podcast. Okay, here's the next one for you. Our kids are in sports, which takes us out every night of the week. Our kids are also in our bedroom, which means we have very little privacy there. Honestly, uh, they were... <laughs> you talked about your sermon. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like our kids are the priority of our life right now, and we're okay with that because they're n- only young ones, and we want to make sure to get it right. Oh Is gosh. this okay? Oh, my gosh. It's so frustrating. Prepare for the mic to incinerate. <sighs> okay. Um, read the last part again. So I can use honestly, their own words to... <clears throat> they said, honestly, I feel like our kids are the priority re- of our life right now, and we're okay with that. So they maybe even have an agreement with, about that uh, because they're only young ones, and we want to make sure to get it right. Okay. Is this okay? No, you're not getting it right. You're okay. screwing it up. Okay. You, you're violating the law of priority by, by making your children the priority over your marriage, and you don't get to violate the law of gravity and not crash a plane. Mm-hmm. Um, so... If both of this husband and wife are on board with this idolatry, then they both need to repent. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is just crazy to me. And so I, I want to be very careful here. And I don't want to be careful. I want to be, well, I don't know what I want to be. Truthful? Other than frustrated. Yeah. So, so you can blow me off as a idealistic, religious, legalistic, whatever. What I'm saying is I've been in ministry for 25 years and my business, our business, are relationships and people. And I have yet to see a marriage violate the law of priority by replacing their marriage with their kids and at work ever, yeah, ever. And so uh, she asked for sports. I think sports are one of the primary idolatries of our day. Mm -hmm. And Christian parents have been swept away by the culture that says, this is just what you do. Right. And so if you're out every night with sports, you have a problem Mm -hmm. because um, time you, you can't replace time with your kids at home, and you can't put, replace time at home with your spouse. And um, let's face it, your kid probably isn't going to play in the NBA anyways. And who's to say that's that's the highest form of adulthood anyways? True. Um, and so parents should use sports only to the end that those sports activities are helping the parents accomplish their clearly identified parenting goals with their children. Mm-hmm. I got nothing against sports. Sports are incredible. Sports are amazing. And sports get used far too often to parent our children in ways that we're not parenting them at home. Right. And so I hear parents all the time say, well, well, uh, sports helps our kids build teamwork and sports helps our kids build resilience and sports helps our kid build whatever. And I want to say, I want to qualify with maybe um, yeah. you got to have the right coach and you got to have the right priorities in place as a context for that sport for it even to help. What I do see sports doing, put it this way, sports is always discipling kids. Yes. Very rarely today, what I say is sports discipling them in the right things. Mm-hmm. And so if the priorities are out of whack with the marriage and the family and the home. It really doesn't matter what's happening at, 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 on the field. Mm-hmm. Like we're already in the minus here. Mm-hmm. So the priorities have to be right in the home. And then we go to the sport as a wonderful activity where we can come to learn and we can come to in, uh, give as well. So for mm-hmm. instance, when our kids have played sports, we approach the sport not as, well, it's a given. Of course, they're going to play, and then we'll move everything on around in our life, including marriage and church, to fit it. It's like, no, no, sports isn't a given. Jesus is a given. Right. Church is a given. Our marriage is a given. Mm-hmm. And then if we can fit sports into our plan and our priorities, great. If we can't, it goes. Right. And if you aren't willing to do that, you're admitting that you have a problem. Mm-hmm. You're admitting that you're prioritizing and potentially Id- I- I- idolizing sports in a way that needs to get checked. Mm-hmm. Because there are very few families that I've seen prioritize sports over their marriage or over church yeah. that grow kids that I would want to claim as my own. Yeah, yeah. Just being honest. And yeah. so it's like, I don't care if your kid's nice and respectable and productive member of society. Does he have a, does he have a white-hot passion for Jesus? Mm-hmm. Do they have a white-hot passion to be involved in the community of faith and build the kingdom of God through the church? Mm-hmm. And very rarely do I see parents that don't go to church three times a month because there are sports tournaments, raise kids who do that. So the, the Proverbs, um, uh, raise a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it. Yeah. What I see parents doing is defining the definition of the emptiness of a busy life 
through the activity of sports with their kids. And then guess what? Their kids grow up and do the same thing with their kids. So we're in this empty yeah. life um, death cycle yeah. that it's going to take some parents with some conviction to break. Yeah. And so when we went to sports with our kids, so like track is the example I gave with our, with, with our son. Mm-hmm. When track came up, it was, should I, should I not do it? And it was not a given that he would do it. Right. You know, everyone is pushed, pressuring us. Levi's big, he's tall, he's fast, he should play football, and he should do this, he should do it. And it's like, well, maybe, but we have pre-identified priorities in our parenting strategy that we identified, that mm-hmm. we articulated, because this is my other beef with parents. Like, what are your goals for your kids? What are the top three yeah, goals? What's that. the character you're trying to build? Like, what, 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 and most parents are like, uh, uh, I don't know. We just want them to have a good crossover. Right. Like, well, that's weak parenting. Mm-hmm. You need to get clear on what you're trying to accomplish and then ask your question, ask the question, will this event help that mission? Right. And if it doesn't, then why are you doing it? Mm-hmm. Doing it just to do it or doing it just because you did it mm-hmm. doesn't mean you should be doing it. Mm-hmm. And, and then the other caution I, w- I would issue parents is, be careful of the train of the train you start in motion when your kids are young, right. because you're laying tracks for the future. So you put them in every freaking travel and elite team when they're young because it's fun and you're having a good time. Right. And now you, as they get older, that's the kid's expectation. And you're mm-hmm. like, well, that's what they want to do. Well, of course, that's what they wanted them to do because that's what you've discipled right. them with. Right. And now the kids are asking for it, right. and now it's getting more demanding on your schedule, right. and it's becoming more expensive. And the trips are further, and the games are longer, and the commitment is higher. Mm-hmm. And now you're just spinning down this rat hole of foolish, stupid choices Mm. that are violating the priority of preeminence, the law of preeminence of of Christ in His church, and the law of priority in your marriage, Mm -hmm. so that your whole family is built around the schedule of your kid's travel team, which is insane. And it happens because parents need community and don't have it in church, and so they find it with travel teams. Very rarely is that community have any substance, Mm -hmm. and very rarely is that community uh, aligned with your your quote unquote stated Christian values. Right. And don't tell me you're being a missionary there. Right. That just drives me crazy. If you're being a missionary there, then I should expect that all of the hardcore sports families in our church are making the most disciples and baptizing the most people. And that never happens, ever. The reality is we never see them. They check out. They stop doing city group life. They're not able to serve. And then pretty soon they just drift. Yeah. So don't give me this, we're we're being missionary stuff when you're actually never connected to what you're supposed to be representing, sure. which is the church. Right. Now I'm kind of uh, going off here. So should I keep going? I, I should. This okay, is fun. Okay, you should. So um, don't put your kids on a track that is yes. going to require you to violate your values down the road as it, as it demands more. Mm-hmm. So every year we reevaluate it, sports with our kids. Or what any is, activity for that matter. I know it's just talking about sports, yeah. but like we evaluated like, should you do drama? Should you do piano? Yeah. Should you do this? And it all has goes back to what are our long-term goals and yes. priorities for our kids, yep. which is where this question is like, we're okay with this because they're only young once and we want to make sure we get it right. That's horrible. It's like, well... If you want to get it right... Yeah. Sorry. Pay attention I, to the actual law of priority because you're going to think you're getting it right in these years and you're going to think they're only young once. Exactly. Yeah. They're only young once. That's right. So they are going to learn so much yep. from what you choose yep. to prioritize in your life. Yep. And even though the two of you are okay with it and you feel like it's working for you, it will not work yeah. long term. Look at the fruit of life It just kids. won't. Yep. So continue like, on well, your... F- for instance, it's okay to be home. Yeah. With nothing to do. True. It's okay for your kids to be bored. Mm-hmm. That's where creativity and innovation starts. Mm-hmm. It's okay to not have your schedule booked to the margins mm-hmm. so you have no time to barbecue, to be outside in the backyard. Read I mean, a book. Read a book, watch a movie, it's good. play a game, mm-hmm. get into a conversation you would would have never gotten into if you were running, with, like your hair is on fire. Mm-hmm. Like, like th- there's this thought that we can't be home by ourselves tonight. Like that's the worst possible scenario. That might be the best possible scenario. Mm-hmm. We have been very jealous to protect our dinners and our evenings mm-hmm. and very unwilling to have a sports program or anything else for that matter violate that yeah. because these are important years. And you know what's more important than a coach being in your kid's life? You being in their life. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know what's more important than them being on a, on a team? Them being around the right kinds of kids. You show me your kid, your 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 kid's five friends, yeah. and I'll I will tell you with remarkable accuracy his future. Yeah. And so, when we came to sports, we had several um, filters we used. Mm-hmm. Who was the coach? Uh, secondly. Uh, who were the kids, Mm -hmm. and thirdly, what was the schedule? Mm -hmm. And if the coach was not someone of admirable character supporting and backing our values, 
if the, if the players on the team um, were not aligned with our values, mm-hmm. and, and that can be hard when because not everyone on the team is a Christian. Right. But if you have a good coach, they can take care of that. Mm-hmm. A good coach is all over that. Mm-hmm. But if you have, if you have a clueless coach, mm-hmm. if you have a clueless coach, then they will allow a kind of behavior on the team that will not be helpful for the development right. and the spirit uh, and the frame of your child. Mm-hmm. And then if the schedule was something that we didn't think we could, we could commit to and maintain our priority of each other, family, mm-hmm. church, then we said no to it. Mm-hmm. And we would talk our kids through it. Right. And we would talk them through why we're thinking this. And so we brought... as We'd our whiteboard it. Yeah. At, <laughs> love the whiteboard. How can you be a parent without a whiteboard? I know. When our kids were younger, we made the decision because we're the adults. Yes. As they and, and, and some, sometimes we we pushed our kids to do it even though they didn't want to because no this is going to challenge them push them mm-hmm. this is going to make them uncomfortable mm-hmm. and then we're going to be there with them to walk through that experience yep. so they can grow and mature yes right? we did um, as our kids got older for the track example of Levi it wasn't a given that he was going to do it even though we knew he was fast he knew he was big and everyone was pushing him to do it it's like well we're not going to be pushed into violating our values so let's sit down and talk about it mm-hmm. and actually. Uh, Levi didn't want to do it, mm-hmm. and I wanted him to, mm-hmm. but not because I'm a sports fanatic dad who wants to live out his dreams through his kid. <laughs> it's because I wanted to use this sport experience as a means by which I was going to disciple my son. Mm-hmm. So we have set manhood goal journeys every quarter since right. he was 10, and this was going to be one of them. Yeah. And so I used the the sport to help him learn how to make good decisions. Well, let's Look at the schedule, and mm-hmm. then look at our family's life. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the coaches. Let's call people who've done it before. Mm-hmm. Let's call people you're under spiritual authority of. So let's call Pastor Brian, his, yep. he, his youth pastor, and he's made commitments to the youth group. Can I still do this and uphold my commitments? Right. Let's look at um, how he could use it as an opportunity to bring kids from the team to church and, mm-hmm. and, and witness to them there. So we, we had a whole constellation of data points we were working from, right. and then it was like, well, Levi, what do you think? And he's like, well, I don't know, Dad. I mean... And, and, and he was wrestling, and, I, and what do you think, Dad? And I said, well, I think I'd like you to try it for these reasons. Mm-hmm. And then if we find that it violates these values and priorities, then we can, we can take a beat and regroup and visit next year. Mm-hmm. And, and so he said, okay, I'm willing to try it. Yeah. So I was actually kind of pushed him to do it. Mm-hmm. So he did it the first year, and it was an okay experience. Sure. Um, but it, it hit all of, all of my discipleship targets. Mm-hmm. And so we came back the next year, and we did the same thing. Yep. It wasn't a given yep. that, well, once we start down this road, no, no, we stop and we evaluate our season of life, the goals we're, we're, we're moving toward, and the decisions we've got to make. And that's a great parenting lesson right there. If you just put your kid in Little League Baseball, and when it's, when it's fall, we play soccer. When it's winter, we play basketball. Mm-hmm. When it's spring, we play baseball. And that's what we do. Maybe. Right. But what about the seasons of your life? Mm-hmm. What about the seasons of your calling? Mm-hmm. And so why let the, the sports calendar run your life? Mm-hmm. And so track came around again, and yep. Levi's like, what should I do, Dad? I was like, well, let's talk about it. And so we reevaluated it again mm-hmm. based on his life, our goals that we had together as a father and son, and we worked through it again, and he decided that he could do it again, and we would use it yeah. as a means by which he could actively work on the, the man car journey challenges I was giving him. So right. now sports was a context mm-hmm. for our discipleship. Yes, and he won state last that year. And here's the thing. <laughs> it was awesome, and we could care less. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is, is it wasn't like, oh, my son's going to go to UCLA. we got to go. Now we've got to hire a personal trainer. Now we've got to get him on a diet. Now we, and it's like, <laughs> I love that my son won state, walked off, gave you a hug, gave me a hug, and said, man, I can't wait to go have dinner and get home. Mm-hmm. And he turned it off, and he never thought of track again the rest of the year. Right. Because he had bigger fish to fry. So, so mm-hmm. our son went to the top of his sport, won it, mm-hmm. and was like, meh, I want to get back to my life that's actually more exciting than this. Yeah, Discipling his guides, helping disciple his brother, mm-hmm. being on leadership team at the church, mm-hmm. leaning into the mission of God at Grace City. Mm-hmm. And so you got to have a life that's bigger than sports mm-hmm. so your kids can actually enjoy it. Yeah. So I actually think my son enjoyed sports more than most kids because it wasn't the main thing. Yes, it was the pressure one of was the off. Things. Yeah, it was one of the things he was mm-hmm. doing. I actually heard the dad of one of his teammates one time say, we don't celebrate second place around here as he walked off the stands w- when his child got second place. Right. And I thought, wow. Yeah. No, no. I'm not here to celebrate where my son came in. I'm here to celebrate the effort he's putting in mm-hmm. and the spiritual growth that he's gaining from this physical activity. And the character that's yeah. being forged. So you've got to have a life bigger than sports. Mm-hmm. So that when you come to sports, sports is a part of 
your life, not the center of your life. That's good. Sports is a means by which you're cultivating character, mm-hmm. not not the center of gravity your life is revolving around mm-hmm. come hell or high water. Mm-hmm. And the irony is the parents that are most hardcore committed to sports that I've observed who are like there because this is how our kids develop character mm-hmm. have the weakest character children. Mm. Like it's not impressive. Yeah. Like their kids are being discipled. Uh, it's just not being discipled uh, with the right things. Yeah. And yeah. so it's not a small thing, the sports deal. And mm-hmm. parents have to uh, take stock seriously mm-hmm. of the reasons in which they're participating in it. I mean, you ask a parent to be involved in something at church, it's 500 bucks, it's going to be going to be two hours on Saturday. Whoa, I don't know. You ask a parent to spend 10 grand on a traveling team, and it's going to require 20 hours a week plus mm-hmm. weekend traveling and gas and mm-hmm. food and hotels. And they're mm-hmm. like, sign me up. Mm-hmm. That's a serious problem. Yeah. That's a serious problem in yeah. the heart of the parents. It's not the kid's fault. Yeah. I put it at the feet of the parents. Mm-hmm. That was the first part of the question. The Next. second part of our question was <laughs> kids in their bed. Oh, yeah. That was in there. That was just tucked in there. Just she tried to squeeze that one past me. Well, no it said, which deal. means we have very little privacy there. Yeah. Uh, there was just. There's just some... Um, Say, read her question again. Or their question. I don't, I don't know if it's a she. Our kids are in sports, which takes us out every night of yeah, the week. Our kids are in part. bedroom, which means we have very little privacy there. Honestly, I feel like our kids are our priority in life right now, and we're okay with that because they're only young once, and we want to make sure we get it right. Okay, yeah. What would you say? It would I, be I interesting. Think, I, think, I think I know what you'd say. Well, what would you say? I would say I think they both need to take a really hard look at... Uh, what happened what did, when... Wait, mom the other night at the well said, yeah. anticipate your regrets. Yeah. I would say you got to look a lot further yeah. than the fact that they're just tiny right now. Yeah. And you think you're going to miss out on something. Yeah, that's good. Look down the road at what you're going to be cultivating in your kids yeah. by, by being okay with them being the priority in life. That's good. There's so many ramifications that are coming, not just for your children, yep. uh, but for your marriage. Yep. Because when your children are gone... Heads up, wife, you won't know what to do yep. because you haven't been practicing prioritizing your husband yep. all along the way. So when all of a sudden the kids are gone, then we're going to get in a scenario like we did before where you're a, a mother-in-law who is in her kids' business because that's how you've always been and that's been your priority. So you ruined your marriage yeah. by misprioritizing your kids mm-hmm. and then with that mispriority, you now start ruining your kids' marriage. Yeah, totally. So it's just look ahead a little further yeah. is what I would say. Yeah. Look ahead a little further. Your kids are in your bed. Well, I don't know. Do you want to have a good marriage and a good sex life? I don't know. If you don't, fine. Keep yeah. keeping them there and let it be just a free for all. Yeah. If you if you want some practical help, well, you're going to have to figure that out. Yeah. And obviously, they need some totally. alignment. You're there. discipling your kids in the wrong things. Yeah. You're giving them a, a terrible picture of marriage, and they go into their marriage. Yeah. You're setting yourself up to be a meddling, busybody parent. Yes. That that requires enmeshment from your children to stay in your broken, fused, yes. dysfunctional family system, and sex is covenant renewal. Mm -hmm. So if you're sacrificing a strong, healthy, vibrant, regular, consistent, wild, joy-filled sex life, you're literally not renewing your covenant. And your covenant's getting weaker and weaker and thinner and thinner Mm -hmm. and cooler and cooler. Mm -hmm. So if you're not stoking the fire and you practice that for 20 years, you may get to the end of parenting and realize you got no fire left. Right. And what we have seen in thousands of hours of mm-hmm. crises, marriage counseling situations, and 25 years of pastoring uh, people, what we have seen is um, divorce doesn't happen year three. Divorce happens about year 20 to 25. Right. And, and that correlates to children leaving the home. Right. And so they, they made the error that this couple is making, thinking they're being nice to their kids, mm-hmm. and then their kids leave, and they realize they have a shell of a marriage. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what the hell happened? Mm-hmm. Well, hell happened. Mm-hmm. You pulled hell up into your marriage by violating the laws of heaven. Yes. You can't do that. And so um, uh, if you... And here's the crazy thing. You spent the whole time telling your kids that we're Christians, and that and, and you know God is first, and then you twisted God's law and God's principles, and you put your kids first, Mm -hmm. and then they leave your home, and you have a shell of a marriage, and you get divorced, you just ruin your kid's faith too. Mm -hmm. Because for 20 plus years, you've been telling them, we're Christians, and this is how we do it, and then you violate your marriage, Mm -hmm. You some walk away from the faith, you divorce your wife, and your kids go, if that's what Christianity is, I don't want any part of it. Right. Screw that. Right, right. So this couple 
needs a cold water, a bucket of water in the face mm -hmm. uh, to regroup on their priorities, mm -hmm. lest they disciple their children with hell. Yeah. Amen. Other than that, uh, you don't have anything to say about I've it. I've got no opinion on the matter. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm a mom of boys, and I want them to one day get married and have their own families. I want them to have a healthy differentiation, as you called it, from our family and me specifically. How can I make sure that happens? Hmm. What did Candy, who's my mom, mm -hmm. do when you were younger? Or what were you doing, Sharon, to ensure that you don't keep your sons from leaving well? Hmm. Well, so you could answer this too. Because you experienced this. Your mom was a boy mom. Yeah. Uh, so what my mom did with me, what, well, my mom, first of all, my mom had a healthy relationship with my dad. Yeah, that's so where it starts. I never felt prioritized over over my parents' marriage ever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, their bedroom was sacred ground. If you're in their room, it's stay frosty. Mm -hmm. it's, it's call before you come or you might get shot. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there were very clear boundaries right. that my parents put on their right. marriage and their bedroom and their relationship that I appreciated. And then my parents were talking to me from an early age mm -hmm. about differentiating. They, they weren't using that word, but that's what right. they were preparing us for. You're going to be a husband. You're going to be Lord willing a father. You're going to mm -hmm. be your own man. And we're not going to come running when you call. Right. And we're not going to pay for your bills. And we're not. Right. I mean, they it, they would be joking about it, but I'm like 12. Right. And so from the, from the time I was young, I was looking forward. Yeah. To getting out on my own, and success was. Um, couched as me being my own man mm -hmm. and me standing on my own two feet and me finding a woman to love and me raising kids that, that love Jesus and right. me finding a calling and pursuing a vision and building the kingdom and yeah. being a man and, and and starting my own family and so mm -hmm. my mom and dad were talking to me about that from an early age and you're gonna when you find a, a woman we're gonna help you do that and here's how we're gonna pursue right. her and you're gonna be a man worth worth uh, being found by mm -hmm. and so if you want to find a woman like this you got to be a, be a man like this. Right. And so the focus was on preparing me and my character in order to be the kind of man that would be able to win the kind of woman I wanted to marry. Right. Um, and then it was, here's how we're going to do it, and we'll help you walk through it. And it was moving from um, high control to coaching to consulting, where mm -hmm. they were there to help me become a man. And then they helped me by stepping back and letting me swim and cough and sputter and drown and come back to life yes. and, and, and move on. And so they didn't... Um, they didn't protect me uh, from the mistakes of my decisions. Um, they were always ready to give counsel if I asked. Yeah. And they didn't uh, put me in a bubble-wrapped uh, suit and roll me through life. They right. let me experience the consequences of my decisions, both mm -hmm. good and bad. And that increased my desire to make good decisions mm -hmm. when there was reward. And it increased my desire to not make bad decisions when I experienced consequences. Mm -hmm. And then when we got married... Um, they were already preparing us for this to say like, hey, you guys are on your own. Have fun. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And the day I got married, my mom came to you and said, he's your problem now. Right, exactly. And that was her way of saying that you as a wife will never have to compete for the affections of my son with me. Yes. Because you are now number one and I'm going to back that play. Yeah. I'm going to support that prioritization. And if I sense him coming to me or us as a mom, yeah. we're cutting him off yeah. because he needs to go to you, not us. Yeah. And so... They set the parameters mm -hmm. that were healthy that we got to then say thank you and honor. Mm -hmm. So they've never made us feel like we were having to, to, to yeah. cut them out. They've always made us feel like they let us go, which then has led us, ironically, to want to invite them in. Yes. Because they're safe to invite in mm -hmm. because we know if we give them an inch, they won't take a mile. Right. They are not the proverbial camel's nose under the tent. When we invite them in to give counsel yeah. or to participate with their family, it's good, it's wise, and then they, they leave. Right. And so if my mom and dad would come over and then never leave, yeah. we'd never invite them over. Right. <laughs> totally. But they are so healthy in their own relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. and their own marriage that they don't want to be involved in our stuff. Yeah. They want to support us yes. and they want to be there for our children in, whenever we invite. Mm -hmm. They want to see their grandkids flourish, and so certainly we're there. But they have almost never pointed something out. There's been a few times where, where, where mom or dad have said, hey, I think you should consider paying attention to this. But even that, it was so, yeah. it was so hands off. Yeah. But many times we've gone to them and say, hey, what do you think? And, yeah. and then when we ask, they'll, they'll be honest with us. And it's very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. So much so that my parents can live with us. Right. And it was actually your idea. Yeah. What are our parents Why can live with Why don't they just live upstairs? So for a wife to, op to yeah. want the husband's parents to live with them, mm -hmm. thinking that's a value added, yeah. those parents have been very wise yes. in how they've differentiated from their children, mm -hmm. and they've made her feel so safe mm -hmm. that they would not violate 
the marriage boundaries mm-hmm. that she feels safe with him being on, on the same property. Right. Right. Which is very, very rare. Right. And so just to honor my mom and dad, they, yes. they, 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 they were clear on these principles of priority mm-hmm. from day one. They discipled us in them, and then they practiced them. Yes. And and they are very happy because of it. And I think they're experiencing God's great blessing by um, living according to God's good principles. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think just from talking to mom, because I've talked to Candy quite a bit about yeah. how she did this, because yeah. I have two boys. We have two boys. Yep. And so I get the joy of doing this. Yep. And there is a different relationship between launching your boys and launching your girls. And obviously we're always praying about that because that's actually the next stage that we're stepping into where our kids are at. And so uh, I've actually thought about this a ton, especially regarding our boys. Yeah. And there are things that I do now. Like It's not like all of a sudden you got to your wedding day and Candy was like, all of a sudden super godly and knew that, oh, here's the time to cut the apron string and off you go. Like yeah. she had been practicing and taking steps to that. Yes. Healthy steps along the way. Obviously it started with the fact that her and dad had prioritized yep. their relationship, their marriage, yep. that they were clear yep. on what they were about. But I also feel like there are steps that I'm even taking now with our boys. Yes. They don't talk to me about everything. There's also a, meaning like some things I say, have you talked to your dad about that yet? Yep. And if they're like, well, no. And I'll say, that's something to talk to your dad about. Yep. Like I do not take on the constant, uh, a role of babying yep. or, mothering. or mothering or smothering my boys and yep. keeping them in a, in a, a young age of like, oh, you're poor thing. Like that's probably so hard. Like yep. I, I talk to Levi differently now yes. as a 17 year old yep. than I did when he was four yep. because he is a young man. And yep. so there are things that we talk about and I say, ah, you need to talk to your dad about this. Yep. Like I'm, I think that's a conversation for you and your dad. Yep. And there are things that he has to discuss with you that not necessarily with me. And I think there are things that I could do to undermine, undermine yep. you, which was my next thing is that Wives, pay attention to your husband's yeah. insight into your children because yes, you're with them a lot of more of the time, probably, but your husband actually has some really great, probably if he's paying attention and he's yeah. godly, he's got some really clear thoughts well, on your boys yeah. specifically. He probably has better instincts for boys than the mom does. Absolutely. Because the mom wants to mother, nurture, and protect. Yes. And the dad in- intuitively knows that if we do that, we'll hamstring mm-hmm. and kneecap our son. Mm-hmm. And so the husband is more willing to let him fail. Mm-hmm. The husband yes. is more willing to let him uh, do some dangerous things. Yeah. The husband is more willing to let their son differentiate mm-hmm. because uh, they don't have the emotional ties. Yeah. And I would add too, um, a mom can undermine a husband pretty quickly, even unintentionally, because you're home with him more. Sure. And so if I was at work all day and and then knowing the kids are at home, mm-hmm. you know, uh, after school or whatever, mm-hmm. and because um, we homeschool and we're part of a co-op, sure. and so they're with you more, it's like, I wonder what Sharon's telling Levi today. Right. Or whatever. Like, like just by sheer amount of conversation, you could have mm-hmm. a closer relationship. Mm-hmm. And boys, after about 10, 11, 12, need more time with their dad than their mom. Yep. And when they're with their mom, they need the mom modeling what a godly woman looks like. Yep. So it's not that you never talked to our son. I walked in last night at dinner, and you yeah. were in the middle of an incredible conversation with Ella May and Levi, our two mm-hmm. oldest, and the youngest were outside playing. Mm-hmm. And you guys were in an incredible relationship about differentiating, about, about enmeshment, about cutoff. With the, you guys were talking about discernment and mm-hmm. dating and, 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 and finding a spouse. And you were giving great counsel, and I didn't feel threatened by that. It was right. a great opportunity for my son to hear how a godly woman thinks. Mm -hmm. And that's very different. I think you've started talking to him more as a godly woman and a wife and a mother. That's good. And that's really an important distinction. Which is a switch moms have to make. Yeah. I think at some point, and that needs to be a conversation with your husband, but you have to stop talking to him like a little boy. Yeah. And you need to start talking to him like a young man, because that's what he's growing up to be. Yeah. And I I think there, there... there are plenty of things you can do as your boy is growing yes. to not undermine your husband's discernment in this area. Yes. Uh, stepping in and saying, oh, no, babe, no, he shouldn't do that. He shouldn't do that. It's it's not okay. Right. And cutting your husband off in yep. how he's wanting to draw things out of your boy. Yep. That will, you said kneecap, absolutely, yep. for your son as he continues to grow. Yep. And that will only further the ties of you as a mom holding on to all these things yep. of your boy yep. being your little boy. I love that my boys were my little boys, yep. but they aren't so little anymore. And nope. that's good yep. and right. And they need to learn yeah. what that looks like to step out. And if I keep talking bad about what you've done or not agreeing with you, even in front of the kids, no, they oh, shouldn't do that. Yeah. That is horrible. That's good. that's absolutely violating our priority, right? The priority yeah. of our marriage because I'm not submitting to you, but it's it's just gonna um, it's gonna cause for weak-minded 
like babyish boys yeah. to grow into young men and not be able to launch, to go out, to differentiate That's because right. they're going to have this thought in the back of their head. Well, my mom, you know, I can call my mom because she'll, mom maybe my mom will bail me do? out. You Here's know, the thing. It's, it's, it's this oftentimes, if you have a son who's not experiencing tension with a, with a smothering mom, mm-hmm. you got a problem. Yeah. You, 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 you have a weak, a, 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 yeah. a, a young boy who's being discipled to be weak. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so there will there was natural tension that you and Levi were experiencing, and there have been a couple times I'm like, "Hey, sweetheart, mm-hmm. like 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 don't say that, don't do that." He's trying to become his own man. Yeah, he's that's all we talk about. I had that's, to learn. That's what we're preparing for. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing that, that's making him feel like he's 12. Mm. He's not. He's 14. He's 16 or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so and there was nothing like serious, but you were having to kind of like, oh yeah, you yeah, kind of maybe, readjust yeah. how you interacted with our son mm-hmm. because it can put the son in a horrible place where like, well, he wants to submit to his mom and be respectful of his mom, yes. but his mom is requiring or asking of him to act like a child, n- not a man. Mm-hmm. And so that's why a mom needs to be willing to step back and go, okay, this is dad's purview now. Yeah. Um, or get counsel from you. Like I'd ask you, Hey, I want to talk about this. Is that okay? Or what, yep. what do you think? Where's he at? How's he doing? Yeah. Um, yep. so, so sometimes the tension between a boy and a mom isn't the boy's fault. Mm-hmm. It's the mom's fault. Yeah. And so don't make your son reach back and clip the lines. You clip the lines. Yeah. Okay, son, you ready? Snip. You're on your own now. Yep, you got okay, it. There's one more. Ready? One more. And mm-hmm. like, they need to feel like, really? I matter. Yes, you are. You yeah. can do it. We prepared you. Your turn. Let's go. If they're not feeling pushed mm-hmm. out of the home, but rather um, trapped, yeah. uh, they're gonna either rebel mm-hmm. or they'll acquiesce. Yeah. Neither of which is 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 a good place for a stronger man to be. Yeah. yeah. And there's not one apron string. There's a lot actually. Yeah. You're gonna start cutting them like early on. Yep. So mamas yep. should be doing that. Here you go. Amen. There you go. You're a good mom. It's we're trying. Because you're an awesome wife. <laughs> His priorities. A lot of priority. That's good. Okay, here we go. Ready? Yep. What are signs in my spouse or in my own life that would help me diagnose whether or not we are prioritizing our marriage? Hmm. Um, Well, one is jealousy. Mm -hmm. If a spouse is feeling like they're having to fight for the attention, energy, or affection of their spouse. Right. Um, One is loneliness, Mm -hmm. where they just feel like I'm not listened to. I'm not heard, mm-hmm. I'm not known, right. I'm not pursued. I feel lonely in, um, in our marriage. Um, another one is ignored. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked with couples where one or the other spouse feels ignored mm-hmm. and they'll give the example of my spouse comes home from work or I come home from work mm-hmm. and they're just tired and exhausted and don't have any time for me and then a friend will call, right. or their mom or dad will come by, and they perk up, and I realize they had energy left, they just didn't feel it necessary to spend it on me. Right. And that can be very, very um, discouraging yeah. and debilitating to mm-hmm. a spouse who, who, who realizes, I guess I must not be the number one priority here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another is anger. Oftentimes husbands will feel anger mm-hmm. if they, and they may not know why, right. but we've talked about where, where it's like, there's been a couple times where it's like, you know, I had some sexual needs that weren't able to get met, right. and you were busy. And I was like, "Hey, not to be a pain here, but like, I'm frustrated right now." <laughs> and, and and you're like, For "Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, babe." Yeah. And we and we and we recalibrated quickly. Mm-hmm. But a husband like sexual frustration is a real thing. Sure. Um, and so if a husband is just constantly finding himself angry, he might not even know why, mm-hmm. but he. For me, I've realized when I've gotten angry, I've realized I feel like the kids are higher on the priority list than me right now. Mm-hmm. That may not be true. But that's what I'm feeling, right. and I'm having to wrestle with anger toward them, yeah, or you because of that. And, and you're so, like, we got to talk about it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. anger in your husband. And I would say, if if you feel violated, and this mm-hmm. can oftentimes be in, in uh, with the wife, mm-hmm. where she doesn't feel protected mm-hmm. from her husband, from his parents, she doesn't feel like he's willing to have the hard conversations. Right. I mean, and I've lost track mm-hmm. of good guys church guys Mm -hmm. who are clueless when it comes to how violated their wife feels in relationship. Mm -hmm. And he's he's like, my mom's great. She leaves Bible study. She's awesome. She makes cookies. Like, no, no. She makes your wife feel violated. Mm -hmm. She's threatening your wife's confidence that I'm number one in my man's life. Mm-hmm. And and he and he views it as a healthy relationship with his mom. She's great right. when it's actually undermining his wife's confidence and his loyalty to her. Sure. And so he has to actually take 
pretty drastic steps. And if the mom is mature, she'll want him to do that. Right. If she's immature, she'll put pressure on him, and then he'll feel stuck. Yeah. And he'll feel cut. It's like, brother, don't feel stuck. You're, you're not between a hard and, and, and a rock and a hard place. Yeah. You have one loyalty mm. on a human level, and that's to your, your wife, mm. not your mom. So this isn't hard to make this decision. Right. And then I think the last diagnostic I would give is if there's a sense of insecurity hmm. in the marriage, because um, that can happen if the law of priority is being violated by either one or both spouses, mm -hmm. there can creep into the relationship insecurity. Mm -hmm. Am I enough? Right. Am I a failure? What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. um, uh, how am I inadequate? Right. Because apparently my husband or my wife needs to go to other places to get their needs met because I'm not enough. And so, right. so I would give you that list. Jealousy, loneliness, ignored, mm -hmm. unknown, anger, violated, mm -hmm. or... Um, uh, insecure. Mm -hmm. if, if if those experiences are being had, then you need to have a conversation yeah. about with your spouse about where that's coming from, mm -hmm. because there's a potential that the law of priority has been violated. Yeah. And what I would say is the law of priority is not a decision that you make one time and then move on. That's right. It's a, it's an ongoing daily decision. Yes. And depending on what's coming at you at any given time, it might be an ongoing daily battle mm -hmm. to ensure that as the seasons of life change mm -hmm. and circumstances of life shift and I grow and my wife grows and, and our health fluctuates up and down and yes. hormone levels and all these things, yes. as all this shifts, we're constantly making adjustments mm -hmm. to our agreements to ensure that our marriage is at any given moment of any given day in the season of life we're currently in, right. being actively, gladly, joyfully, mm -hmm. ruthlessly prioritized. Yeah. So you protect your your marriage from things that would attack it, and then you pursue relentlessly your spouse in a way that makes them feel prioritized and watch the blessing and beauty of God flow into your home. Yeah. It's good, babe. I love you. Love you too. All right.